Hey everybody, it's Mr. Gear, and guess what? I'm not in school again. See? I can prove it. Actually, I'm off at ACT training downtown again, but we're still going to do your lesson by video just like we did it last week. I hope you find it interesting. Today it's called Vertex Edge Graphs. So I have to start off today talking about a guy by the name of Lenhard Euler. I'm going to talk about him a number of more times during the course of our, our course, of course, because he gave us an awful lot of new information, a lot of sort of insightful ways of looking at the geometry that we've been learning around here. Now, he's not the most attractive guy in the world. Ah, again. But he was basically a genius when it comes to analytical geometry. And he did a number of thought experiments, and I'm going to tell you about one of them now. One of the things this guy Euler liked to do was he would take strolls around the city of Konigsberg, where he lived for a time, and just check out the sites, check out what was going on around. But he was always thinking. He's always trying to come up with new ways of looking at the world around him. And he noticed that here in the city of Konigsberg, there were seven bridges that crossed over the River Prevel in different locations, different uh, places that people needed to get. And he looked at the bridges, and one day he asked himself a simple question. I wonder if it's possible for me to travel over every one of these bridges only once and never have to backtrack over any of the bridges. Seemed like an interesting enough question, so he tried it out and it just never worked. Every time he tried it, he thought, this has to work. There's no reason why it shouldn't. And yet he'd try it and it didn't. And then one day he started thinking, I wonder if it's not possible, and even more important, I wonder if it's possible for me to prove that it's not. Now, for the record, the bridge at Konigsberg problem has been attributed many, many times as if it's a young lover's problem. Two young lovers were walking through the city, and they so desperately wanted to spend time together that they decided to see if they could walk across all the bridges without ever double-crossing, double, doubling back over one. That story is almost certainly apocryphal, which is a long word that means it's a neat story, but not true. Thing is... Euler obsessed and obsessed and obsessed about this and ultimately came up with a solution, which is so long and involved, obviously, I'm not going to explain it here. But what he did determine was that, yes, it's impossible, and he could prove it. Here was Euler's big breakthrough. He realized that it wasn't about the bridges. They're just a place to get from one place to another. If he truly wanted to analyze this problem, he needed to look at the nodes, the places the bridges connect to. So Euler's big breakthrough came when he recognized that it wasn't about the lines or the bridges, it was about the nodes, or what we would call in these diagrams, the vertices, the points where the lines come together. And he found that he was able to prove whether you could make it all the way around that path, whether you could make it across the whole thing, based strictly on what the nodes looked like. And specifically, what he cared about was whether they were odd or even nodes. An odd node is one that has an odd number of lines coming out of it. Here's a node right here. How many lines come out of this particular node? Well, it goes that way, that way, and that way for a total of three. That's an odd node. How about this node right here? How many lines come out of that node? One, two, three, four. That's an even node. So he take, took a look at a whole bunch of different graphics and figured out what he could about the nodes. This one's got two, two, four, two, two. They're all even nodes. This one's got three and three. There are two odd nodes. This one's got three, 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 and three. Those are all odd nodes, more than two. And here's what he discovered. Yes, you can do it with this one. You can go all the way around and start back where, or end back where you started. Yeah, 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 yeah. Simple. He noticed on this one. You can start anywhere and end somewhere else, but you can cover the whole thing. Nah, nah, nah. Start there and there. And he noticed on this one, you can't get around the whole thing at all. Nah, 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 nah. Whoops, I'd have to cross back over that part there.
The concept is actually devilishly simple if you stop and think about it for a minute. Look at each of these nodes. On the left, there's an odd node. It has one, two, three lines coming out of it. On the right is an even node. It has one, two, three, four lines coming out of it. Think about the odd node for a second. I can come into it. I can go out of it. But if I come into it again, I'll be stuck there. Think about the even note. I can come into it. I can go out of it some other direction. I can come back into it. I can go out of it some other direction. If the nodes are even, I can come in and go out. There's an even number of entrances and exits. If the node is odd, I can come in and go out perhaps, but once I come back in, I'm stuck.